tennis coach Judy Murray has been instrumental in developing British number ones, including her sons, Jamie and Andy Murray. My kids, they reckon that I'm the worst cook in the world, so I'm actually out to prove them wrong. Judy, why are you here? My kids are always blaming me for bringing them up on tins and ready-made meals, so I'm figuring it's time to redress the balance and start learning how to cook properly. What are you making for us now? A, a pudding? Yeah, an apple and raspberry crumble, and it's in the oven already. It's very simple, very straightforward. Do the boys know you're here? They do, and they both more or less said the same kind of thing, which was, oh, my God, you'll be rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Great to get support from the family, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Judy's got a crumble in the oven. Not a huge amount being done by Judy. However, if it tastes good, that's wonderful. Internet star Riyadh Khalaf kick-started his career with a YouTube channel that amassed 30 million views and now has his own BBC podcast. When I was 15 years old in home economics class in school, I served a chicken Kiev medium rare. Didn't do very well. So this is about redemption. I'm going to, you know, get my good name back. <laughs> Riyad, how good a cook are you? I'm better than my fella. He'll hate me for saying that, but I am. What are you making for us now? Um, OK, so this is hake on a celeriac mash, a pickled red onion and fennel salad, and crispy capers. Wow. He's doing a celeriac puree, which is going flavoured with turmeric. That's wonderful. Hake cooks really nicely, so it doesn't go like cotton wool. It's a big skill. Riyadh obviously has a decent repertoire. Are we doing for time? You've got just two minutes, please. It's meant to look like that. It's meant to look like that. You have 60 seconds. Final touches, please. That's it. Your time's up. Stop. I was going for the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> what a nightmare. Riyad, come and join us, please. Broadcaster and internet star Riyad has cooked pan-fried hake topped with fennel, pickled red onion, crispy capers and pine nuts on celeriac mash. I think you really thought about the presentation. I think it looks great. Oh, thank you. Your touch with that fish is superb. That is just flaking and falling apart. Your celeriac is really earthy. Love the crunch of the vegetables on top. Believe me when I say that is a really fantastic dish and one of the best starts I've seen on Celebrity MasterChef. <laughs> really? That is fabulous. Thank you, Greg. Wow. Thank you very much. Are you going to be as nice? I concur. <sighs> wow. I am really, really impressed. Your hake is beautifully cooked across the top, finely shaved fennel and red onion, slightly pickled, not too sharp. It's a great balance. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, how do you feel? I'm over the moon. I need a large glass of Sauvignon Blanc and a cry. <laughs> I'm in shock. I'm absolutely in shock. Well done. I'm kind of also afraid that now I've set myself up for a fall. How are you feeling? You're shaking. He said it was like the best first. That's unbelievable. So everything now has to be better than that, and that was kind of the best I could do. Across the kitchen, Karen is portioning 40 pieces of salmon for their main. Go on, Karen! <laughs> Cooked a lot of salmon, but I've never, ever worked with this size of salmon, and not so many. 
salmon, lovely, with some Cajun rice, and guacamole on the side, great. But it needs some moisture, it needs a sauce. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pan fry them, yeah? Yeah, get the skin nice and crispy. Yeah. For the vegetarians, a stuffed pepper. Lovely idea. There might be some cheese across the top, but it needs something else with it. When you're cooking for 120 people, the standard still has to be the same if you were cooking for, like, four people. So this is a whole new challenge altogether. It's the biggest whisk I've ever seen. I'll have pretty good arms after today. Teammate Karen's almost finished coating the 40 salmon fillets in Cajun spices, ready to be pan fried. Oh, I was born spicy. It won't be too spicy. It's not going to be too aggressive, you know, but it'd be something that people can handle. Man, woo. This is looking very nice, if I say so myself. Karen. Hello. How are you getting on? The fish is looking lovely yeah. and smelling great. Blackened? Yeah, our blackened nice. spicy salmon. Yes, go um, on. Amazing. <laughs> Sam's labour-intensive chocolate mousse is ready to pipe into individual portions. So how confident are you these things are actually going to set? Um, Ask me that in about half an hour. And what do you do if they don't? If they don't, it will be a luxurious chocolate... Drink. Yeah. But the blue team is yet to start both the vegetarian pepper to be stuffed with rice or the Cajun rice side. That was stressful. Rice goes in the vegetarian. Rice also goes with the fish. You don't get the rice out, get it out well, get it out on time. You ain't got two dishes. So the boys have already gone up. What, they've already gone up? Yeah. Can I just say thank you all very much for your patience. It'll be here soon, but it's worth the wait. A couple of minutes only, I think. OK, thank you. All right, so you stick that in. Good. Very good. Wow, look at that crowd. <laughs> Hi, <-ya! laughs> It's a bit scary, isn't it? Over 20 minutes late, the blue team is finally ready. They look hungry. They look hungry. They look hungry. You can tell. And they look ready. Yeah. Service with a smile. Uh, Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a salmon and rice? Please? Yeah, sure. Salmon? Salmon, please. Yeah. Karen and Sam's blackened spicy salmon with Cajun rice, salsa verde, and guacamole is also selling out fast. Bless you. Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, it was nice. The salmon was cooked well. The skin could have been a bit crispier, but the guacamole went really well with it. The fish was nice, a um, little bit spicy, really well cooked. And with the salsa verde, it was really, really tasty. So, really good. In terms of texture, it was good. And it was, it was very tasty. Spot on, spot on. The salmon is a little bit over. However, it's forgivable, I think. I really like the spice in the background of the rice. The salsa verde itself is lots and lots of mint and lots of coriander and rich with olive oil. The cold avocado against the hot salmon I find a bit unusual. However, I think it's a great invention. I think they've done a brilliant job. That salsa verde is herby vibrant. I love the wet slipperiness of the guacamole with lime in it. I think that's a good dish in big numbers. What we want from you are two courses. You've got one hour, and at the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. Don't panic, Carol. Keep calm and do what you were told. You OK? You look a little bit flustered. 
I am flustered. I'm trying to attempt something a little more delicate, a little more involved. Why are you taking your food up a level? I want to do something other than mince. <laughs> I'm trying cod wrapped in parma ham with a pea puree sauce and a clam broth on the side and hopefully a chocolate fondant that's going to come out of its ramekin. What's in your clam broth? I've made a fish stock out of my cod trimmings, dash of plonko. Just a single portion of wine or a double decker? Just a double, always a double decker. Enjoy. <laughs> piece of cod wrapped in ham, get the ham crispy on the outside, let the fish cook slowly in the middle, perfect, it should just fall apart and not be overcooked and dry. As to a chocolate fondant, I just hope she's making quite a lot of them, because when the first one comes out and doesn't work, then we're going to see the panic button being pressed. I have to be honest, I haven't really practised the two dishes together within the time. So I'm kind of winging it a bit. <laughs> I just think I need to leave this now because I'm just messing around with it. Back of the net. 60 seconds left. Stop, your time's up, stop. Carol, up you come, please. Carol's first course is cod wrapped in parma ham with pea puree and a mussel and fish broth. I think your cod looks fantastic. I hope Thanks. it's cooked really well. Good on you. Thank you. Tuck in. I think that's rather yummy. Thank you. Rather yummy. Nice flaky cod, salty ham, sweet pea is lovely. So that's a nicely presented, good, tasty dish. You made your own fish stock. Your fish has seasoned really well. That ham has protected the delicate flesh. I think it's really, really good. Vibrant in colour, great textures. Good job. Thank you, both. For dessert, Carol has made a chocolate fondant with raspberries and creme fraiche. I'd like a little bit more run with my fondant. I'd like the sauce to run out and flood the plate. However, your flavours are absolutely perfect. It's not too sweet. Really rich, dark, cocoa, opulent dessert as it should be. Fantastic. Good job. Listen, I've seen many a contestant in tears with their fondants. Well done. Thank you. I didn't expect that kind of feedback at all. Well done, well done, well done. Amazing. Really good. That's epic. They were very positive. It's all good. Martin's starter is a pea and wild garlic soup with morel mushrooms. I'd like that soup slightly thicker. However, that is delicious, Martin. There's no two ways about that. That is absolutely delicious. I'll get hit, first of all, by the natural sweetness of pea, which is delightful. That goes into a tangy, mild garlic flavour, and then you finish with that beautiful, beautiful, deep morel mushroom. That's a delicious morsel there, mate. It's a great, vibrant green colour. The flavours are good. Woody mushrooms, the lovely flavour of the wild garlic. It's good. It's very good. For his main, Martin has made a roast rack of lamb with shallot puree, roast parsnip and leek, and a side of dauphinoise potatoes. The fat on your lamb could be rendered some more. However, to get all this work done in an hour, I am really impressed. Uh, your shallot puree is delicious. Lovely and sweet, but also well seasoned. Your lamb is cooked really nicely, so it's still pink. Dauphinoise are fantastic. Soft and creamy, little bit of garlic, not overpowering. It's really good, really good. Yeah, thank you. Martin, there's a cook in you, mate. <laughs> there is a cook in you. This is well-made food. I'm very impressed with you. Oh, 
relieved, relieved. I was just really pleased that they liked the flavour. That's, that's what got me, and that, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits with that. For semi-final place, you're going to do a souffle, Kelly? Well, I've, uh, it's either sink or swim, isn't it? So. What is it about this competition that you love so much? The people I've met have been fantastic. And you two. I used to watch on television and think, I hate you two. Well, I thought we'd end up having an argument, but we haven't, have we? You're so different. You're, you're very helpful. And, and I, I'm actually learning something which is really different for me. Oh, hake. I mean, you want a flaky hake. Mm -hmm. Don't you? A really flaky hake. Kelly, we need to get some stuff on plates, please. OK. If you've got the anchovy and the chorizo, you might be pushing it on the saltiness factor. Very nice, Kelly, very nice. You happy? I am. I'm ready. Go on, Kelly. Don't drop it, come on. I like that. Go oh, get your nose in. Oh, yeah. Kelly has cooked pan-fried hake, served on a tomato, anchovy and chorizo compote with pan-fried padron peppers. Hope you enjoy anyway. Oh, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Kelly. Thank I'm loving this. It's the flaky hake that we all hoped it would be. Everything about it is really yummy. You know, we wonder whether anchovy and chorizo might be too salt, too overpowering, but it's not. There's a real sweetness to the tomatoes, too. The padrone peppers not only look pretty, but they give that sweetness and taste. This is a really, really good dish. The hake is flaking beautifully. It's like cooked by a chef. I really, really like that. This dish is without fault, and I'm really, really pleased about it. Now it's time to pray. Please rise. Please rise. <laughs> Just the word souffle makes me a little bit edgy. Mm. It's brave. We like brave. We like brave. Woo! <laughs> They're going. <laughs> Kelly, your souffles look amazing. Oh. <laughs> Don't look now, but this is all working perfectly. Don't put a curse on me. <laughs> Here we go. They look fantastic. Slowly. Oh, I'll get you! Oh, look at this! <laughs> get them on a plate! <laughs> Come on. Coconut sugar, go. Mate, look at these. Take two, take two, go. Well go, done, go, you. Go, 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 go. That is fantastic. Fantastic. They're um, banana souffle with a hint of coconut served with a passion fruit sauce. Lovely. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, Just Kelly. looks awesome. Oh, I mean, you know, that's what you want a souffle to look like. I've really tried out the souffles. They were great. They were like sky skyscrapers. Oh, my goody aunt. As long as they taste all right, hopefully I'll get through. I. Just, I can't get over this pudding. It's so accomplished. This delicate cloud of a souffle with this punchy, passiony, coolie. I couldn't fault this. This souffle has been the best thing I've ever eaten here. It's absolutely flawless. Oh, that perfect souffle. The top is wonderful and crispy, and the sauce is lovely and sharp but sweet. Very good indeed. <laughs>